Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to my second video. My Let's first act like we're on vacation. Go stand next to that old gentleman there. I want a shot of you with the town in the background. <laughs> sure. I'll even give you a title for the shot. A city boy. Moments before he got eaten by a bear. And even back in the Xbox 360 days, this opening scene looked terrific. But now, it looks really good. The water effects in particular just look honestly amazing. Alan, before he missed the shot. Hi. Hello there. You picked a good time to visit our town. Deerfest is just two weeks away. Deerfest, huh? Did you hear that, honey? You have a lovely wife. If you don't mind me saying. I'm Pat Maine, by the way. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm Alan Wake. I won't pretend I don't recognize a famous writer such as yourself, Mr. Wake. A pleasure. I'm an avid reader myself. I hope this isn't too presumptuous of me, but I'm the night host at the local radio station. Any chance I can get an interview? Look, Mr. Maine, I'm on vacation. In fact, I'd appreciate it if we could keep my being here just between the two of us. I'm sure you understand. Fair enough. You can trust me to be this Not a hard man to track down if you change your mind, though. I hope you two have a lovely holiday. And Pat Main pops up a few more times down the road. He's just one of those, like, super nice old guys. So I cut out, like, a couple minutes of this part because it's just you literally waiting on the boat. It definitely drags on a little bit, but I guess it does set, give you a nice view of the town. Very nice. I got a couple of really good ones. And I see you made a friend. That's cute. Right. Yeah? Hey, bestseller. That was my favorite writer. Are you there yet? Very. Yeah. We just got here. Are the locals giving you trouble? Just say the word and I'll hop on a plane and come make sure that you're left alone, Al. No, Barry. We're fine. Great. Great. Just want to make sure you can relax and recharge. So, how is the place? Has it gotten your creative juices flowing? Barry, we're just settling in. Okay, Al. I'll call back later to make sure you're doing okay. And you call me if there's a problem, okay? Okay. I'm just looking out for you, buddy. Talk to you later. I love you too, Barry. You know he's going to be calling you every five minutes. Barry is Barry. I can always turn off the phone. What did I tell you? Text message from Barry. He says hi to you too. Alan, we're here. And honestly, if Come I had on, to pick a favorite to character in this game, it would be Barry. You'll meet him uh, like an hour or two into the game, but he's like a, just a really cool character. We need to stop at the local diner to get the cabin key from the landlord. A Mr. Carl Stuckey. He's waiting for us. I'll go fill her up while you get the key. I'll pick you up here in, say, 15 minutes. Sure. Alan, thank you for coming here with me. I love you, too. Go on. I'll promise to behave. I'd forgotten there were still places like this. Towns where everybody knew everybody. Welcome to the Oh Dear Diner. Hi, I was wondering if you could help me. I'm looking for... Mr. Wake. Alan, wake. Oh, God! I am your biggest fan. I know people say that all the time, but I really am. I'm glad to hear that. Rose. Rose, I'm looking for Mr. Stuckey. Carl Stuckey? Carl? Oh, of course, Mr. Wake. He must have gone to visit the restroom. He'll be back in a moment. I can't believe it. I've got all of your books. I got the cutout from the bookstore when they took it out of the window. And you keep it here. Well, okay. Good for you. Ah, uh, right. So much for a quiet vacation. This whole section in particular just, just shows how good up. Remedy is the world building. From the different uh, people really in the diner, each right with their now. crazy, unique Organized. personalities, Number to the jukebox that plays music. 
it really like gives you a sense of this sort of like backwoods small town life. Bad circulation. Yeah. Are you serious? Coconut again? You disgust me. Call yourself a rocker. Unbelievable. Ha! Now that's what I'm talking about. Yes. This is it. I've died and gone to hell. Don't go in there, young man. You can hurt yourself in the dark. I think I can handle it, ma'am. I didn't want to wait. I wanted to find Stucky, to get the key and get out as soon as possible. The waitress was giving me a headache. Over. Hello? Mr. Stucky? Carl couldn't make it. Unfortunately, he was taken ill. But I have the key for you and instructions on how to get to the lake. Okay. I wish you a good stay in my cabin. I'll come by later to check how you've settled in. And to meet your wife. I insist. Thanks. Yep, she's totally not evil whatsoever. Cauldron Lake is a special place. Very inspiring. You got lucky this time, young man. You can hurt yourself in the dark. This really ought to be fixed, and then I must remind Sarah to change the lights of this. Even that sounds better than your singing. Are you all right? <laughs> the Andersons, they're uh, local musicians. We're waiting for Dr. Hartman to come pick them up. They wandered off from his clinic at the Cauldron Lake Lodge. What I love about this intro sequence is every single character you find in the diner appears in the story later on. Mission accomplished. The key and the directions. My hero. I got some flashlights, just in case. Hey, wait! Mrs. Wake! Your... Your keys! And here we uh, have our first plot twist of the uh, game. We were supposed to meet Carl Stucky to get the keys, and instead they got it from some crazy lady. We're supposed to be on vacation, Alice. I'll figure it out when we get back home. Okay? Okay. We can talk about this later. I didn't want to talk about it. I wanted to bury my head in sand. Once upon a time, I was a successful writer, but that was a long time ago. I hadn't been able to write a word in two years, not since my last book. And now the weather. It's going to be a clear night, so you folks in the big city might want to look up every once in a while and see those stars winking down at you. It gets pretty dark out here, but they'll light your way. It's gorgeous, Alan. Oh it's yeah, I almost forgot I was playing a video game. Don't worry, honey. I'll get you inside safe and sound before it gets dark. And I've got the flashlight. I know. I'm okay. Alice had a phobia. The fear of darkness. I wanted to make sure we were inside with the lights on before sunset. And so if I look like I'm walking around like a complete idiot, I probably am. But Remedy put collectibles all over the place, so I was basically trying to, you know, look at every single possible corner of the map. The cabin obviously got its name from the shape of the island. It looked like a giant bird leg. Alice had mentioned that the lake was a caldera. There was a dormant volcano under it. And what do you know? There's a coffee thermos waiting for me at the top here. And so about the coffee thermoses, they're literally utterly useless. You don't get anything in game. But I still try to get as many as I could in this way through.
I'll get you inside safe and sound before it gets dark. And I've got the flashlight. I know. I'm okay. Alice had a phobia. The fear of darkness. Make sure we were inside with the lights on before sunset. And so we got a pretty typical horror movie setting here. Nice wood cabin in the middle of nowhere, you know, deserted island. I'm not a huge fan of the QTE parts, but I mean the game came out in 2010 and that was just kind of what every single game did back then. Can you figure out how to get the power on, honey? A shoebox filled with books by Thomas Zane sat on the shelf. I'd never heard of him before. Hello? Anyone here? And not to be the type of guy who always compares everything to Dark Souls, but how Remedy tells its story and what fills the world in this game always kind of reminded me of Dark Souls. For a moment, the oppressive feel of the nightmare I had seen on the ferry returned. I needed to get the power running in the cabin. There had to be a fuse box or a generator somewhere on the island. The cabin looked like a time capsule from the 60s, or even earlier. And these radio broadcasts are totally optional too, and the first couple playthroughs I just totally skipped them, but uh, the last couple I've gone through I've stopped and listened to them, and it, I've really come to appreciate what they do to just add, continue to add on to the lore of the world. Sure, he's glad to be here too. Well, folks, I guess the secret's out. This is Pat Main on KBFFM. And now some music. Great. So much for keeping a low profile. The power cable goes to that shed over there. I have to say though that the amount of games that make you turn on generators is honestly kind of startling. The island had once been the site for a love story. Maybe it would be that again. An old generator had been connected to the power cable. It's things like these that definitely makes this game show its age sometimes. I mean, the game's 11 years old now. The lights are on! Good work, honey. All freshen up with Alice had told me about Cauldron Lake Lodge. The old building used to be a hotel, but these days it was no longer open to the public. Okay, I'll look around a bit. It was a beautiful place. I told myself I could rest here, sleep here, and forget about my work. I thought we could be happy here. Well, you definitely thought wrong, Alan. Sorry to break it to you.
Not gonna lie though, I wouldn't mind having a cabin like this myself. Alice? Honey? Alan, I'm upstairs. I have a surprise for you. What's the rating on this game again? Well, hello there. I'm not the surprise. It's in the study. Go take a look. <laughs> okay. Alice do be looking fine, though. Surprise! Alice? What is this? I guess I have a small confession to make. I thought maybe you could write here that a change of scenery would get you past- Damn, Alice, you- Everyone Hey, keeps... hey, hey! Just hear me out! There's a local doctor, Dr. Hartman. I read a book of his. He has a private clinic here. He specializes in helping artists. Maybe so now you want to get me committed? No! It's not like that. That's not... Alan? Alan? I don't! Just don't! I don't want to hear it! God damn it, Alice! God damn it! I knew she wouldn't follow me in the dark. I needed some time alone to think things through. Damn it. Alice? had gone dark. All the lights were out. Alice! You probably all saw this coming, but you know. Help! Alice! It's alright! I'm coming! No! What the hell? from one nightmare and entered another. I couldn't remember how I got there. All I knew was that something terrible had happened to Alice. The phone was dead. I'd have to find help on foot. And that is why you don't drink and drive, kids. Among Alice's things was a book, The Creator's Dilemma, by a Dr. Emile Hartman. Seeing the book brought back my fight with Alice. I didn't like it, and I didn't like the guy's smug face on the cover either. That is one thing you'll see later. Alan Wake pretty much hates this guy's guts for no reason, honestly. The gas station was my best bet. They'd have a phone I could use. It looked like a long hike through the forest to get there. And as you'll see, he's certainly not kidding about the long hike part. I think the warranty just expired on that one. Hello? Hello? Is someone there? The loose sheets of paper were pages from a manuscript entitled Departure. That was the name I planned to use for the next novel I had never gotten started. I was named the author. I hadn't written it. I couldn't remember writing it. In the scene on the page, the hero was attacked by an axe murderer in the woods at night.
Departure by Alan Wake. The man turned to face me. His face was covered in shadows. It was hard to make him out in the darkness of the forest that surrounded us, but the axe he lifted was plain to see. It glistened with the blood of his victim. He grinned madly. The shadows were alive, distorting his features. It was a scene from a nightmare, but I was awake. So in addition to the coffee thermoses, you can find manuscript pages, and these basically uh, foreshadow future events and add, you know, background info and lore. Anybody there? Please! I've been in an accident! And now, if I saw a creepy shadow person disappear in the middle of the forest, I probably would not yell to him, but that's just me. The lights up ahead were a good sign. Maybe I wouldn't have to hike all the way down to the gas station to find a phone. Anybody there? Please, I've been in an accident. Hey! Hey, you! Phil! There's been an accident. I need help. Deposit. Listen, I need to... Premium cabins for rent in... Oh, hell. Carl Stucky. Pleased to meet you. non reservable Reservation deposit required. Fair and square. And the thing that I think is really cool about most of the bosses in the game is they actually somewhat retain the personality of the person they were before the darkness took them. And I think that just really lends the personality of each of the characters. The Taken stood before me. It was impossible to focus on it, as if it stood in a blind spot caused by a brain tumor and eye disease. It was bleeding shadows like ink underwater, like a cloud of blood from a shark bite. I was terrified. I squeezed the flashlight like my life depended on it, willing it to stop coming any closer. Suddenly something gave, and the light seemed to shine brighter. some hops or something. to figure a 
some way out of this. Any second now, and Stucky would be knocking on the door with his axe like Nicholson in The Shining. Why break into the house, I guess, when you can just push it right off a cliff? And now I just killed someone or something. There were no bodies. They just disappeared. If I was dreaming, it felt real enough to make me sick. Also, where did the idea of kicking electronics the to make the last place I wanted to go? But I <laughs> In the real choice. world, that does not I had work to too get well. to the gas station. Eerie hand-painted graffiti was revealed by my flashlight. Someone had hidden a chest of supplies near it. Rose knew she had been gushing, but right now, she didn't care. As far as she was concerned, her brief meeting with Alan Wake was literally the high point of her life. She watched as he got in the car with his wife. She was pretty, confident, at ease with Wake. Not like Rose. They were perfect for each other. She'd have given anything to be called their friend. I'll probably leave off here for my second video. If you like the video, like and subscribe below, helps a whole lot. But until next time, I'll catch head. you guys later. I realized that I'd have to find a way across. I didn't even want to look at the water. <laughs>